independent computer repair company with offices in Omaha and Lincoln. This is Compute This. Good morning, folks, and welcome into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion, where we can fix your computers, recover your data, whatever you need us to do that is computer-related, we can handle it over at Schrock Innovations. All right. Today, 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program. Ask a question or make a comment. We'll put you in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Good for anything your heart desires over at the service center. Just uh, give us a call here, and we'll be happy to uh, help you out. You can also email the program, Thor, T-H-O-R, at SchrockInnovations.com. All right. Also, you can uh, view the show this morning live on Facebook at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. Uh, let me know, guys, what uh, how the audio levels are. Everything should be good to go. Everything is adjusted. But I have that nagging feeling. You ever had that feeling like you're, you're forgetting something? I have that feeling this morning, like I'm forgetting something. And I think I got the chair that, that sinks again. I thought I was all slick and switched them around, but my chair is slowly falling again. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be fun. But anyway... So we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens with that. All right, so last week we had some interesting questions about what kind of password manager I would recommend. I, we had a caller who called in and said, hey, you know, what, uh, what do you recommend for a password manager? What program do you, do you use to keep track of all your passwords? And I said, well, I don't use a program to keep track of my passwords because I kind of feel like, you know, it hasn't happened before, but... Man, that, that's a nice, ripe target for somebody. If you were a bad guy and you wanted to attack something, you'd want to attack a website that managed everybody's passwords because once you have the passwords, then you can turn around and you can get into anybody's site that you want You know, because you have the passwords, right? So if you're going to attack somebody, don't attack the person. Attack the password guy, the, the password manager. <laughs> He's the one you're going to want to, uh, to make sure that you, that you nab. And sure enough, uh, password... Company One Login uh, has has been uh, breached, basically, unfor unfortunately. So, uh, yeah. So, all, One Login was a very popular service. Lots of people used it, and uh, when that got when they got breached, it was worse than just hey, somebody got into your One Login account, uh, because of course all of the data that One Login has is encrypted on their end. Um, the bad guys somehow were able to decrypt all of the information that one login was storing so whatever decryption mecha mechanism they had it was available on the website and or on the server and when they breached the server they got that too so not only were they able to access all customer information they were also able to decrypt all customer information so if you use password manager one login one O-N-E login, one login. And you, this is on our Facebook page as well at facebook.com slash Schrock Innovations. But if you use the password manager one login, you need to immediately stop using it and change every single one of your passwords, all of them. Not tomorrow. This is like a, you can miss church today to do this thing because th this is urgent. If you don't do this, this, this already broke two days ago or a day ago. So you, you need to do it immediately. And literally it popped up on my phone like it was a news alert from ZDNet about uh, uh, one login getting compromised. And I looked at my wife and I said, oh my gosh, just last week I got a call on air asking what password manager I recommend. And I said, well, you know, I, I use with Firefox. I set up my Firefox account and it, it'll synchronize my passwords from my browser. So I have the passwords that I save on my desktop on my phone. So I don't have to try to remember which device I saved the password on. But I don't like password services because it just – you don't know how well they secure their own stuff. Boy, I, I should have pulled the audio from that call because that, that was the exact answer I gave, I think, is it because you just don't know how well they secure their own stuff. And you're trusting your security to somebody else's security that you don't know and you don't control. And, yeah, it's – and, you, you know, and there's no – one login was free. So it's like there's not even a responsibility there. I mean, it's like, hey, it's free, man. You know, you get what you get. <laughs> so anyway, that, uh, that's – a bad news deal this morning on Sunday. So if you are a one login customer, you need to immediately change your passwords. All right. Keith posts on Facebook that he has a binder full of passwords, which apparently means the audio must sound good because all my volunteer audio techs aren't, aren't listening yet this morning. So 
I digress. But anyway, 402-558-1110-800-543-1110. Also, summer is in full swing in the service center. Now, uh, after the show, sometimes we do a little thing. Now, I didn't name this because, you know, I feel embarrassed every time I say it for some reason. But it's just silly. It's fun, but it's silly. The After Shrock Show, because uh, it's after the Shrock Innovation Show Compute This, so it's After Shrock. The After Shrock Show, um, which sounds a lot like After Shock. And, uh, so anyway, so uh, Aftershock is a, is on after the show. Of, as long as I don't have anywhere I have to be, I'll stick around for five ten minutes and you know take any calls that we didn't get on the air and stuff like that, and just kind of just kind of clean up. Sometimes we have some questions about stuff that's going on behind the scenes at Shrock, and customers want to know like, you know, what's happening at the Papillion Service Center? Where is it moving to in December? You know, things like that. So we'll we'll answer those questions. Well, last week um, I had a number of people during the Aftershock ask me, when are you going to put Semantic Endpoint on sale? Because you know, wow, I've got some computers that could use it and I could really use a sale on that. And I thought, well, gee, we haven't done that in a while. You know, it's been almost a year since we did that. And, you know, sometimes the sales on Endpoint get a little confusing because there's a price to get Endpoint, the initial price to get Endpoint installed on your computer. If you don't know what Endpoint is, by the way, um, it is the single best antivirus product that you can possibly get for your computer. It is amazing. In fact, it's so good that when I'm trying to, to do some things on my computer, because sometimes, you know, I, you know, I mine some cryptocurrencies here and there. You know, Ethereum is, uh, or Ethereum, however you want to say it, is uh, is popping pretty good right now, and it's still pretty easy to mine. So you can you can make some pretty good money if you got a good graphics card. So you know, I was mining some some you know ether and. My computer detected the mining. My endpoint detected the the algorithm that I was using as a possible virus because bad guys will try to infect your computer, then use your computer to mine for cryptocurrencies for them using your power at home. Um, so it detected that as a possible virus, and then I had to exclude it and add it and make sure. And it was like, oh my gosh! And then I had a customer who was trying to do it, and he was all like, ah, oh, I can't get this done. So we had to add it as an exclusion to the to the overall list for Shrock Innovations customer group, and it was pretty crazy. But uh, anyway, we got it all we got it all taken care of. But at the bottom of the or the end of the story, Endpoint is an amazing piece of antivirus software for two reasons. Number one, it's made by the same company that used to make Norton 360. I still have customers coming into the service center that are running Norton 360 on their computers. Norton 360 was discontinued years ago. So when you're buying it, they'll keep renewing it all day long. You're going to get newer and newer and newer virus definitions, but your scanning engines are never going to change. So what that means is as these new ransomware viruses come out, your Norton 360 was, was developed before the era of ransomware. It can't really scan very well for that stuff. Um, whereas Endpoint is continually developed. Endpoint is the same cybersecurity that big businesses use. This is what the big guys use. But the cool thing about it is we were able to get an account with Symantec and then take what the big boys use and make it available to individual customers. Now, how did we do that? Endpoint is designed to be administered by an administrator, hence administered. Um, but the administrator you know, gets Endpoint out there. And once Endpoint is going out to the, to the users in the company, that administrator can you know, push scans and definition updates and check on the, the security status of, their, of his users. He can get alerts when his users get infected and the, and the endpoint software can't automatically correct it. And then he can take autonomous actions through the control panel with endpoint to fix the problem so you don't even, he doesn't even have to bother his employee users in the company. And we thought, wow, if you just took employee user and replaced that with consumer, so now we have an antivirus product that's actively managed by a team of professionals, that'd be us, the administrators, that we can make sure customers don't get infected. If they do get infected, we can clean it up without them even knowing they were infected because it's that good. Um, and then once we clean it up for one customer, we can create a rule that'll clean it up if it ever happens for any other customers, so then we don't get alerts for that ever again. So it's a constant battle. As more viruses and stuff come out, we keep creating more stuff but our customers have a blissfully ignorant experience. It's like, it's like you're one of the people that gets up every day and goes to work, no idea that there's a North Korean EMP satellite flying over your head every day. No clue, but hey, you know, though someone, someone's looking out for that, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody's on that problem. You know, so it's kind of like that. We're on the problem. <laughs> no, not that problem, but other problems that we can be on, we're on. Um, so that's the big benefit of Endpoint. So when you first get Endpoint, um, it's so good, by the way, we guarantee it. Um, semantic doesn't guarantee it. Like it, it, if you get infected, you get infected. Sorry, we did everything we could. People get infected. It happens. Um, even with the best medicine, some infections get through. So 
at Schrock, our our method of how we have deployed Endpoint is so effective that we guarantee every installation that we do with a virus-free guarantee. If you get infected with anything, we will remove the virus for free because it doesn't happen. Um, it used to be with Norton 360, we'd have you know maybe three or four a quarter, you know every so about one a month. That would one customer a month would get infected even though they were running endpoint. They were usually doing something silly like disabling their their Norton 360 so they could go and take online surveys <laughs> and make money taking online surveys. Come on, man. Or they would disable it to go look at various websites that your grandmother wouldn't want to watch you looking at. Um, you know what I mean? So if you're going to do that, you know, I mean, there's there's no antivirus that's going to help you. If you turn off the antivirus, if the screen pops up and says turn off your antivirus to continue, you probably don't want to do that. But, you know, some people do. So uh, those those people came in about one a month and we had to clean them up. But with Endpoint, even if you turn it off, even if you disable the protection, there's it's Endpoint still protects itself, which is beautiful. Because the first thing viruses do is they attack the antivirus software. So even though Endpoint is not actively you know, socking away for you, protect, protecting your computer. If something tries to take Endpoint out at the kneecaps, Endpoint rallies, um, and, and it'll take down whatever's coming after it, even if it's disabled. So it, it's really great because even if the customer chooses to disable it, it gets the customer what they want to do in the short run, but it also allows the computer to be protected. So that's good stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I'm seeing some comments. Thomas Morrison says, sounds good. He's not synced, but he's on slow Wi-Fi. Um, let me see here. Gloria's writing on Facebook. Speaking of Norton, what is the Norton VPN? And is it something I should purchase for when I'm away from home and using my Schrock Android tablet or phone? You know, this is a great question. VPNs allow you to browse the internet anonymously, among other things. But that's the main the main push when you see an ad for a VPN. It allows you to do things without your internet service provider knowing what you're doing because it routes the traffic through all kinds of other countries and other places. Do you need it when you travel? No. Will it improve your security? marginally especially when you're on other people's networks like public wi-fi's and things like that um whoever owns the wi-fi can see all the traffic so you you definitely want to you know i guess if you're going to do it that'd be the reason to do it um i don't do that i guess so if that tells you anything i'm, I'm not quite at the level where i'm like i need a vpn but there have been a couple times it's kind of creepy you know oh, okay this is Remind me to set, remind me to tell you the Cox dream story. I had a dream that I was on customer support with Cox, and, and when I woke up, I was mad because the problem wasn't solved, and I woke up. But it was a dream, and I was actually I was actually upset that my problem wasn't solved. That I had to like stop and be like, wait a minute, I never really had a problem. It was just a dream. Oh, but I'm so burnt about the Cox data caps that it just yeah. Anyway. Uh, I don't want to go off on that tangent just yet. All right, 402 558 800 All right, so Endpoint, we're going to put it on special this uh, this week through the end of next week. So it's going to be on special all until the uh, 5 o'clock next Sunday. Um, so you've got one week to grab it on special. Now, there's a few ways you can grab it on special. Normally, Endpoint is $160 the first time you buy it. So it's a little pricey the first time. It's a per-computer installation, so you have to buy one license for each computer. Because we administer the computers, there's actually a hard cost. Whereas when Norton gives you, like, 15 licenses for one price, you know, with their consumer products, they don't have anybody actually, like, managing your computer. It's all passively managed. You're, you're the administrator, so they don't really care. Um, with us, we have to administer your computer. There's a cost to that, so we have to make sure we cover that cost. However, once you're in, the renewals per computer are only 60 bucks a year, which is actually cheaper than your Norton 360 or uh, Norton Security renewals that you have now at about 80 bucks a year. Um, so it's a, it's a pretty sweet deal. But last year we did this. We're going to do it again this year. It's on special right now on the website as well at schrockinnovations.com. You can get Semantic Endpoint for your computer for only $99 for the first year. So that's 60 bucks off the normal price. That's a huge discount percentage-wise uh, off of the base price for Norton. Um, the cool thing is, is if you want to, you can buy it right on the website at schrockinnovations.com. You can get it installed on your computer, and it will go through and keep you safe, keep you protected. Of course, you want to remove any other antivirus software that you have. If you have McAfee, if you have uh, Avast, if you have AVG, if you have Kaspersky, anything like that that you have installed, if you're going to put Endpoint on, you don't want to run two antivirus scanners. It, it doesn't make you more safe. It's not like wearing two Band-Aids. 
You know, <laughs> if you put one Band-Aid on and you put another Band-Aid on over the top of that Band-Aid, it doesn't make it heal any faster. It's just a waste of Band-Aids. Same thing. You, you want to run one antivirus thing at a time because it can actually slow your computer down. So you can get it on the website, shockinnovations.com. When you buy it online, you will receive a code and a download link in your email. You click the download link. You use the activation code to install on your computer, and it'll go through. It's going to reboot your computer and do some stuff for you, but it'll go through and do everything for you. If you would prefer to have one of our technicians do it, you can bring your computer into any one of the three service centers. Once again, in Papillion, we're on the corner of 72nd and Highway 370. Um, in Omaha, we're at 168th and Burke. And, of course, in Lincoln, on the corner of 27th and Pine Lake Road, we'll do it in the shop for you. If you don't want to come in and you don't want to do it on your own, you have a third option. We can Schrock Desk in. Uh, this is our online support service where normally you have to be a subscriber to the Schrock Desk to use it. You, know, you pay 30 bucks a month for unlimited support, and whenever you have a problem, we fix it on the Schrock Desk. During the whenever we're selling a product or providing support for a product that we have sold. So if you have a problem with Secure Updater, for example, or with Endpoint, or if you get your computer home from a repair and you're like, hey, I can't get my printer to work now, we use the Shrock Desk to do warranty support as well. So you may have had an experience with the Shrock Desk, even if you're not a subscriber, but it's pretty slick. You have to let us in. You have to you have to go to our site and you have to put in a code that we give you and that allows you to connect to us. That way, once it's disconnected, there's no way for us to automatically reconnect to you or anything weird like that. Um, so basically, you just go ahead, get everything set up. Once it's all set up, we're out of there and your computer is protected. So any one of the three ways work. Uh, the service centers today are open from noon until 5. Uh, so it's a little bit of a short day today. And usually if you call right at noon, things are pretty busy right at noon. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a short day, so we usually only have one person or two people in each service center. So, you know, if you call right at noon and the phone lines, have to, if you get the, hi, thank you for calling Schrock Innovations. All of our technicians are currently assisting other customers. Please stay on the line, and a technician will help you as soon as possible. Thank you. Do, 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 do. And then and somebody asked me the other day, like, the hold music is like some, like, light guitar riff that we bought online from, like, a music rights website for, like, 10 bucks so we could use it. And somebody asked me, like, is that you playing the guitar? And I'm like, I just love how people think I can do anything, you know? <laughs> like, yeah, that's me uh, strumming along there. That's my Carlos Santana moment. Just playing the guitar in the background on hold. Yeah. If I was there playing the guitar, I'd answer the phone. You know? <laughs> I wouldn't just, hold on. No, I'm, I'm, I have an audience now. I have three lines on hold. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of lines on hold, uh, all right, we're going to take a quick break here on the show. When we come back. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about computer security this week because there are some things you want to make sure that you're doing for your computer that are important. Uh, Dale, you've got a question here on, on the line as well. You had some pictures on a micro SD card, and the names are there, but where did the pictures go? That's interesting. The case of the disappearing pictures when we come back next on Compute This. Need a website fast? Schrock Innovations can build your website, place your content, and drive customers through your doors for a lot less than you might think. Call Schrock Innovations today and watch how we can drive your business's profits. Welcome to Schrock Innovations. How can I help you today? I'm having a problem with my computer. You're Oh, man. I knew was, I had something wrong, and I looked down at the camera after I started the show about three minutes in, and my head was at the very bottom of the screen. I looked like a little kid. like, like I could have grabbed like the banner and like, hi. Uh, so it was kind of funny. So I was like, yeah, let's adjust the screen a little bit. So maybe that's what I was missing. My chair hasn't shrunk anymore yet, so we'll see what happens there. All right, jumping into Facebook comments. All right, sounds good. We'll be talking to you soon. No sweat, Patty. You guys asked for this. I mean, you guys are my Facebook listeners. So, I mean, you guys were last week. You remember you were here for the aftershock. You're like, hey, what about Endpoint? Here we go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hey, Roger's online from South Dakota. Good to see you, Roger. Appreciate it. All right. Let me see. Neither my computer nor my iPhone are synced, and the video portion is frozen on both. I think you need a new phone. All right. <laughs> Got to go back in, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Alrighty, guys, welcome back into Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I am the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. 402 558 1110, 800 543 1110. Those are the numbers to join us on the program where you can ask a question, you can make a comment, you can be a part of the show and get yourself in the drawing for a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. That would come in really handy if you're going to buy Semantic Endpoint. Now, 
The way the certificate works, it's not a coupon code. We're going to fix that. I keep saying that every week, but I need to make that a priority. We're going to fix that so it's not like a paper certificate you receive in the mail anymore. Um, but if you win and you're going to do you know, Norton today, you can call the service center and pay over the phone, and we can do it that way over the phone for you, and then we can just rock desk in and do it. But it's an easy way to save 25 bucks because it's the same as cash. So you can you, you normally you can't put two discounts together. You can't get the new customer coupon for a free hour of labor and the special on Norton. And we'll have people try that. You know, they'll come in and say, oh, I have a virus infection. Now I'm using the new customer coupon, so I get $110 in free labor. And then, yeah, I want the 60 bucks off for the Norton, and we have to tell them, you know, use the new customer coupon because it's a more valuable coupon. You use that one and then forego this other discount. But uh, so yeah, but you can use those certificates there as well. All right, uh, one quick uh, kind of PSA thing on the Ultimate Upgrade laptops that's going on right now. Um, we have been frantically working to get these Ultimate Upgrade laptops out the door. As you know, the Ultimate Upgrade ended a, almost a month ago. Uh, and we still have some units that have not been delivered to customers, which is a little unusual for us uh, to have them a month out um, on, a, on an Ultimate Upgrade, no less. It's not like these are holiday specials that have 20 different parts in them. Um, you know, with the holiday specials, we order the laptop from Asus. We get the laptops. We change out the memory. We change out the hard drives. We get them out to you. And that's what makes them special. The fact that they have the solid state hard drives in them is really what makes the difference. Um, so we were ordering our laptops, you know, the, uh, the S models, happy as can be. And then all of a sudden, one day, Asus starts shipping us D models. Now, the D models look exactly like the S models. They have the exact same specifications as the S models do. They come natively with 4 gigs of RAM. They come natively with a 500 gig storage, the whole bit. And, okay, that's great. Except all of a sudden, these units are chip on board. And as we've talked about in previous shows, I understand that the whole world is going chip on board. I know it's inevitable. I know that we're going to be and we're going to end up selling laptops that are chip on board someday. However, when we sold these laptops to our customers, they were sold as modular that could be upgraded, not chip on board. So it's not really right for me to deliver chip on board laptops to people who are expecting to be able to upgrade their memory later if they want to. And some of you did when you bought it. You you took the eighty dollar option to double your RAM. So like we get we had it. That's how we found out. We got it. We got a laptop in. We flipped it over. Took the bottom off of it to uh, install the new RAM. And there's no RAM slot. And we're like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Uh, so you know we look into it. We find out there's one letter difference in the model. We think they screwed up and sent us the wrong ones. So we box them all up and we send them back to ASUS. Once ASUS gets them all back, they send us replacement shipments, and they're all the same ones. And we're like, guys, what the heck is going on? Well, here's what happened. They, they dropped the old model. It's done. And so what we've been doing is we have been grabbing the old models anywhere we can find them. We're getting them on Amazon. We're getting them on Newegg. We're getting them anywhere we can find the old models. So we're basically taking a loss on every one we deliver and doing our best to get the old models as quickly as possible so we can fill the orders. Meanwhile, we've had some customers upset that they ordered a computer a month ago. The charges come through on their credit card, and they don't have their computer. I totally get that. So what we're, what we're doing basically is we're getting the computers that, that we think you want to have. Now, some people don't care. They'll, they'll take the chip on board stuff and they don't mind. I don't want to assume that, though. So we're going to be reaching out this week to the customers that have outstanding orders and letting them know. It's not too many. It's only about a dozen customers that have outstanding orders that have not been filled. Um, that, and give them the option. We, can, you know, we have three choices, basically. We can fill it with a chip on board model. We can fill it with a uh, – we, we can keep – we can find these. They, they pop up. In, you know, The problem is I can't order like 12. I have to order one, and they usually take a week to ship and supposed to, you know, or, uh, Asus gets them to us in like two to three days. But if they, take a, uh, if they take a week to ship, meaning five days before they actually go out the door, that's a problem. So it takes longer to get here. So like right now, I've got three on the way right now that are going to arrive this week that are going to go to the next three customers, and, you know, then – on Monday, I'm going to start the hunt for more. So we can do we can deliver you the chip on board models, which I don't like, but we could do that. Um, we can basically keep getting the models that we're getting now, which we are going to get everybody filled. I know I'll be able to find enough. Um, or the other option is for a faster delivery, we can actually upgrade you to the i3 model, which is a better processor than what the Ultimate Upgrade came with. It's $100 more expensive, which is why it wasn't the Ultimate Upgrade, but we can get those all day long, and they are not chip on board at this time. Um, so basically we have some options there, but I'll be sending out emails to customers on Monday that have outstanding orders just to kind of let you know what's going on because, you know, one of the things is, you know, we got to communicate this kind of stuff and I got to be open about it. We took a review on Facebook yesterday that was a two-star review because of this. And, you know, those are the kind of things that, uh, you know, of course you want to deal with those individually with people, but, you know, you, you get, we're a service company 
And when you make a mistake or you have a problem or an issue, you have to own it. And when you when things are going great, it's like yay. And then when one thing when something goes wrong, people people speak up. So we got to make sure we own that. That is on us. We're going to make sure we deliver the product that we promised. Uh, we can get faster delivery under these other two circumstances, though. So I will uh, watch your inboxes for an email from me. If you don't get an email from me, that means we don't have your email address, or it got caught in your spam filter, or we have a typo or something. And you can always call the service center then as well. All right, four zero two five five eight eleven ten eight hundred five four three eleven ten Dale. You're the first caller of the program today. How can I help you uncompute this? Uh, I got another one of those annoying problems. Um, just a little back history. November, got a new Samsung phone, got a new um, Lexar ultra high speed micro SD card. Okay. And I transferred about, I don't know, 50 pictures via Bluetooth that I wanted to have on the new card. Okay. Anyway, I got currently maybe about 400 pictures, and a few days ago I realized that I went to go back to one of these pictures that I transferred, and it didn't generate a thumbnail. Well, that's kind of weird. That's a bad sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, anyway, the name's there, um, but no data. So I took the card out, put it in a reader and a laptop, and uh, sorted them by size, and I got seven of these initial pictures that I transferred via Bluetooth, that the name is there, but there's no data in the file. So I was just kind of wondering what your thoughts were. And is that the way things work? Is when things start failing? Or well, that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> no, I know that. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm calling. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not how it's supposed to work at all. What's going on basically is you've got um, they're, they're, the transfer never happened in the first place. Well, the, the, the pictures were there because I, I, you know, I initially when I transferred them, I looked at them all. So they were there, and now they're not? Yeah, 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 they were there. Because I, I looked at, you know, when I did that, because I was picking and choosing, you know, which pictures I wanted to choose, and then I was, so I was transferring them kind of slow to the device. Right, well, you were going over Bluetooth, so, yeah, it's going to be a little slower than if you're jacked in with a cable or something. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and there's kind of reason I did it that way, too, because the other phone I had, I had a, a picture issue anyway. Okay. Uh, well, and if... I was afraid something was corrupted, so I didn't want to directly per se, you know, transferring. I actually did a, an intermediate. I put the pictures on the laptop and transferred them from the laptop over to the, uh, the, the phone. Okay. But no, the, the pictures were there. They were visible. Okay, quick question then. Do you have these pictures on any other device or are they lost? No, they're not lost. Yeah, I, I got copies. Okay, of so we can transfer copies. again if we need to. Right. Yep. Okay, yep. so the first thing is, is I want to figure out, do you have Drive Advisor installed on your computer? Um... No, I don't. Okay. No, that's all right. It's all right because it doesn't – Drive Advisor this, this wouldn't – This is on a phone. This isn't on the computer. Oh, but we're going to get to the computer here pretty quick. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> Drive Advisor, uh, well, it won't work for SD cards, but it will work for hard drives and things like that. And, and this is the kind of thing that you would expect. If you see this happen on your computer – and this is why I brought up Drive Advisor. If you see this happen on your computer – this is the kind of thing that indicates a failing hard drive. So if you have Drive Advisor on your computer, it's a free program. It doesn't cost anything. There's no no ads, no upsell model, no revenue model. Doesn't it's completely free. But so if you install Drive Advisor, you can get it at Drive Advisor, Drive Advisor dot com, Drive Advisor dot com. Um, it's up on the Facebook feed right now as well, facebook.com slash rock innovations on the live video. But Drive Advisor dot com, you install it on your computer. You have to install it. I've had people ask, I downloaded it, it's not working. Well, you got to install it. Oh, okay. And then it works. But it, it'll pop up and send you an email, actually. It asks for your email address, not because, you know, of, of any marketing or anything, but it asks for your email to send you a picture of what's going on with your hard drive if one starts going bad. So basically, the, the thought that I had here is with your SD card, a lot of those high-end SD cards also come with an adapter that you can put that little card into that makes it a regular SD card instead yeah, of micro it did. SD. And it if you, did. If so that's what I used when I plugged it into the laptop and sort of stole the pictures by um, gotcha. uh, file size. When you plugged that into the laptop, did it did it ask you to run a check disk on it? Did it say no. that there were issues with the drive and we want to check it out? No. Okay, good. Um, because if it if it would have done that, that's an indication that the that the drive's structure was corrupted. And if that starts happening on micromedia, if it happens like every time, um, that's an indication that your micromedia is bad. Would, so, that be, would that be a good idea for me to put it back in and go in into tools and run that? It wouldn't hurt. It's not going to hurt anything. That's why I asked if you had the pictures somewhere else first. Because yeah, if did. you didn't, we would want to scan the card and try to recover those pictures before you did that. No, that's not an issue. Okay. It's just that I don't want to... 
I don't know if it's you know if it's going to be an ongoing thing or just a fluke when they got transferred. I don't know. Well, there's only uh, one way to figure that out, Dale. What's that? There's only one way to figure that out. <laughs> time, right? No, let's do it again. <laughs> if it happens again. If it, if it gets squirrely a second time, squirrely once happens all the time. Squirrely twice, the same thing? Mm-mm, not normal. Uh, yeah, yeah, you got to be careful of, of double squirrelies. <laughs> right. yeah. Thanks for the call, Dale. I appreciate it. We got you in the drawing as well. I appreciate that technical term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double squirrelies, watch out. All right, thanks a lot. No, no, don't play with your dongle, Dale. 402 558 You know, some new listener is just listening right now, and she's like, oh, oh scandal. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break. Joe, you're up next. When we come back, we're going to help you out with that power supply next on Compute This. Don't have time to bring your computer into the service center? Schrock Innovations offers free pickup and drop-off as well as in-home and on-site repair services. Call 934-9423 for an appointment today. Every person listening to this broadcast has either experienced data loss or knows someone who has. Is that you? <gasps> new purple shirt i know today on purpose i wore my red shirt which looks pink on camera now i'm just having fun with it i'm experimenting and my forehead is like super shiny i'm like a greasy band here it's these lights in here they have these giant like soft floodlights they have floodlights in the studio literally they're floodlights so you can see the light hitting the banner behind my head over here and you can see that it's really bright really intense so this is not a this is not a TV studio. This is a radio studio, and most guys in here, you know, they radio guys. Am I right or am I right? Radio guys have fought the introduction of cameras in the radio studio for years. Well, well how does it say go? I have a face for radio. You know, it's like so. Why would you put a camera in here? I have a face for radio. If I was one of the beautiful people, I'd be on TV. You know, so that's funny. Hey, good morning, Don in Las Vegas. We're happy to have you on the show today. All right, glad the audio is better, Cy. Si. We turn down the speaker a little bit. All right, there we go, because I've only got one good ear, and if it's going in my ear, then that's bad. Boy, how, how about this stuff happening in England right now? Isn't this nuts? I mean, I don't know. You you look at all this stuff that's happening around the world, and it's like, you know, at I, I first when they issued a terror warning for all of Europe you know, earlier in the year, I was like, come on. Is this like a, a quid pro quo tit for tat thing? Like, oh, we hate Donald Trump, so oh, there's a travel ban, or not a travel ban, that's a different story, uh, or a, a travel advisory. And then you see stuff like this happen, and you're like, wow, maybe they know something that we don't know. That's that's pretty nuts. So I don't know. It's uh, I, I saw those headlines come across last night, and I thought that's that's pretty intense. So, yep, so make sure, guys, uh, the endpoint sale was done at your discretion. You guys asked for it, so we got it for you. So that's going to go. It's going to go for a week. Uh, so it'll be on until next Sunday at, uh, well, at midnight, basically. It'll go through the end of the day. That allows me, if somebody missed the show today, I can come back next week and do it one more time. All right, the audio on Facebook now is good. From the station mic, it is still a bit hot. Okay, right now I'm on a laptop lid for a microphone. The station mic is under my control over here. All right, we'll try that. All right, we're going back in, guys. On News Radio 1110 KFAB. Hey guys, welcome back into Compute This. My name's Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company with service centers in Lincoln, Omaha, and Papillion. All right, so I had some complaints that the audio was a little hot on the online feed, so I'm tweaking it. The funny thing is, it's like the, the audio levels, they give me an analog knob to turn for audio. I literally have a volume knob that I can turn. It's not, it's not even a cool slide. It's like it's a knob, and I turn it just like an old radio. And so, but the thing is, is if I turn it like a quarter of a notch, I lose all audio. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like turning it with my thumbnail. Mm, there we go. Got it. All right. 402-558-1110-800-543-1110. Joe, you're next up on the program. Joe needs power. Joe, what did the North Koreans hack in your computer today? <laughs> uh, good morning, Thor. Good morning. Uh, yeah, I got up this morning. Uh, Used the computer last night, and uh, I get up this morning and I come in to turn it on or uh, fire it up here, and uh, I notice uh, it was down. You know, normally I leave it on all the time. Yep. And so it was down. Now, 
I had the little red glow down there, you know, where the, this is one of your holiday specials. Yep, the lights are on, but nobody's home. Right, right. So I'm pushing the off on button. I thought, well, I can just maybe reset it here, and, and that had no effect. So I reach around back, and there's the power switch there, and I just shut it off. Waited, you know, a little bit here, and then I uh, turned it back on, and I noticed a flash inside the cabinet. Oh, fun. Yeah. So, and then that was it. There's nothing. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so here's uh, here's what's going on. Uh, you have a power supply that's failed, obviously, and usually the type of failure you're experiencing is the kind of failure most people experience. It's not a big dramatic like, I remember back in the days, like, when I started, when I started Shock, you know, 18 years ago, when power supplies would go bad, you, if you've ever in your life, like, forgot that the uh, the coffee pot was on, like, the, co- the Mr. Coffee was on, you know, the coffee pot in there, and it was empty, yeah. and that, that and it burns the pot, that dry, burnt coffee pot smell. Right. Like, if you've never smelled it, you have no idea what I'm talking about, but, if you know, like, millennials have no idea. They're like, does it smell like Starbucks? Like, no, it doesn't. It smells terrible. <laughs> it smells like somebody burnt a skunk on a hot plate. It's bad. Um, but that's what that's what a blown power supply smells like. And sometimes I, I had a technician once, like a customer brought their computer in and said, oh, it makes this little, weird little high-pitched sound when I turn it on. And, and I had a technician's like, really? And he turns it on and he doesn't hear it. And he puts his ear right next to the power supply and he listens real close. And then, bam, the oh. power supply just – it just – popped right in his ear like it was like a gunshot going off oh, wow. and he staggers back and he's holding his ear and i'm like oh gosh this is my first thought was oh my gosh is blaze okay um it was we had cool names at the shop back then that was his real name you know we had thor and blaze and then we had a girl named jen you know so i don't think she was kind of odd but you know whatever she didn't have a cool name um but no and he was like grabbing his ear and we're like oh my gosh did it shoot like metal shards in his ear or something he's like no it was just really loud um, so that's a dramatic pop bang that you used to hear back in the day. You don't really hear that much anymore. And that kind of just fizzle out um, where they eventually get to the point. What year holiday special is this, by the way? Oh, it's several years old. I lost track of time here. I don't know. <laughs> several like five or several like ten? Oh, maybe, no, maybe four or five. Okay. So basically uh, a power supply's normal lifespan, uh, engineering-wise, is about two to three years before the, the manufacturer says – we expect to have to replace it. That's why when we do holiday specials, a computer that's supposed to last you like 10 years, we're always, always, always super duper 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 strongly recommending our amazing extended warranties that it blows my mind. Literally, we put a call out on the first to people and I can bring it up here and I can see. Let me I'm going to check this out. I'm going to go to my Google Sheets account and see how many people responded. So we send an email or a, a, a call or one of those robocalls, calls, which I hate. And it says, hey, guys, I might owe you money. Call me back. And it's my voice. Like, call me. I might owe you money. And uh, it, it, you know, it's just a little more nuanced than that. It doesn't you know, come out and say, hey, it's a lotto. You know, come on, give me a call. But, like, if I look here at the – and we always do it a month ahead because we don't want to have people expire because if it expires like your washing machine, that's when it breaks. Yep. Um, so we sent – okay, let me get here. 33 warranties we had expiring in the month of July. Because, you know, not a lot of computers are sold in the summertime. Uh, So we had about 33. And when we sent that call, one, two, three people called back. Three. I'm just like, I can't believe it. So basically, uh, in your case, you you had your holiday special. Did you buy the extended warranty when you got it? I did, but uh, I don't know if it ever got renewed or if it's still in effect or what. Okay. Well, we want to find out. First of all, if it did get renewed, um, if it did, then the power supply repair is going to be free. It's not a big deal. Right. Uh, we, we just, you bring it in. We replace the power supply. You take it home. Right as rain. We do test everything because on some occasions, a power supply failure can take out other things, especially when there's a flash inside. Um, that's, a power, that's a big power surge inside the computer from the power supply. Right. Um, so we want to make sure. So you, you definitely want that unplugged right now. Um, so basically, if you bring it into us, we keep power supplies on hand. So we can replace the power supply usually same day for you. It's not a big deal. We'll test everything. That's what's going to take longer because the holiday special has 16 gigs of RAM, has two hard drives in it. You know, it takes a little time to test all that stuff, but we're going to test everything to make sure it's good. Then once it's good, once we know everything is okay, one of the things is if you have a Schrock modular computer and your warranty has expired. Now, the reason I'm talking, I was kind of making fun of people for not calling me back about their warranty because we all get those stupid warranty calls about the warranty on your automobile has expired, and we have uh, important warranty information about your Ford F-150 vehicle now. Please press 1 to be transferred to a not-salesperson. 
you know, we all get those stupid calls. And so it's kind of – I tried to make something different like, hey, I owe you money potentially. And the reason I say that is because if you buy an extended warranty from Schrock and you don't use it, we actually will refund your money back to you in the form of a Schrock gift card. And then you, what customers will do is if they buy like a one-year warranty and they don't use it, they can flip that warranty – the next time so they get their 100 bucks back, then they can buy an extended warranty for about the cost of the gift card, and they just flip it every year. And then when they need the warranty, like right now, power supply for a holiday special is going to run about $149, um, and there's an hour of labor to put it in and do the burn-in test and all the hardware testing and everything that goes along with it. So you're, you're looking at a, probably about a, a $260 repair. Um, so a $125 warranty is a really good deal for that. Yeah. Um, especially when you can keep – if you don't need it, you keep flipping it. And then if you decide, hey, I'm going to get a new computer, you can use that gift card toward a new computer. So it, uh, that's why it blows my mind um, when Trudy, Carol, Ruben, Teresa, Mark, Judy, Lester, Mark, again, Sandy, Michael, Rose, Kelly, Ken, Randy, Janice, Kevin. It would just be shorter if I say thank you, Jackie, Deanna, and Neil for calling back because I'm trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> These are all people that have warranties on their computers that are expiring in the month of July, and we send out two or three calls. So if you miss the call, you know we'll send another one out again. But uh, but basically, if you get that into the, sh the service center, there's a, a good 85, 90 percent chance there's no problem with anything else in the computer. We just have to replace the power supply, and that'll get you back up and running again. Sounds um, good. But we'll test everything just to make sure. I'll be running it into the uh, Papillion store today. Sounds good. Sounds good. See, that's the thing. I, I say, hey, we're going to move Papillion at the end of the year to a new location. Where? We don't – well, that you have to listen to the Aftershock. <laughs> we, no, we, we, it's kind of a running story because we're trying to keep it in Papillion. We really want to keep it in Papillion and, you know, without getting into all the details. See, I can go into details during the Aftershock that don't go out over the air, which is kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, you can listen to that if you want the real lowdown. But, uh, but basically – we're looking for a new location. We're considering Midlands Place right now, which is on Olson Drive. Uh, it's and, and I was meeting with the owner of that that property the other day, and he said, "All you have to do is tell people you're on Olson Drive, and they immediately know where it is." And I I, I don't know. So people in Papillion, let me know on Facebook. Do you know where Olson Drive is? Okay. Well, I live in Bellevue, and Papillion's handy for me. But uh, well, the other location we're looking at is actually 36th and Highway 370. Okay. Yeah, that works. But uh, here's the trick there. So we're looking at a building there, and one of our competitors is in that strip. And, oh. the, and the landlord has told us if, we'll, if we move in there, so sad, too bad for the other guy. And I'm like, that's really low. I don't know if I want to rent from a guy who's going to do that. <laughs> that. That's really, really low. Like you have a paying customer in your bay. And I know he's one of our competitors, and, yeah, this would probably be devastating for him. But still, that's, that's a special kind of nasty. I mean, <laughs> so – but the, but – Wow, the rent is super agreeable, like epically agreeable compared to what we're looking at on Olson Drive, like half. Um, but the building's a little older, and we'd have to do a lot of renovation to the building. We could get in there and get all the power we need and everything, whereas the Olson Bay one would be new construction. So we're still trying to figure that out, but we're coming up on, on decision day here uh, where we have, to, we have to make a decision because construction and permitting takes time. Um, so, yeah, but uh, so we, we are going to be moving Papillion. Uh, our last month in that bay is December. Um, and, of course, that means we have to have a big grand opening thing, which means we, we've we been throwing away junk, right? So the recycle guy, when he comes, he's going to be like, what happened here? There's like a big pile of stuff. And then, you know, whenever we buy computers, and I, I know this is off your, your topic, uh, Joe, but when we buy computers, we always have extra parts around for these things. Like, so when we buy tablets, you know, we have extra tablet parts. When we buy laptops, we have extra laptop parts. When, you know, and so eventually those models go bye-bye. But the parts, the spare parts stay on the shelf because we sell extended warranties, right? Right. Well, then the extended warranties eventually go bye-bye. But somehow the parts just stay on the shelf. And, uh, and so we went through and we're like, wow, this like, is a laptop palm rest from like a Windows Vista laptop. I don't really think we need this anymore. Uh, yeah, let's recycle that. So, but the, we did find some other stuff that was completely functional. We're like, hey, we should have like a big like – you know you know how they have neighborhood garage sales? Yeah. So like this fall, we should have like a – like the junk that we wouldn't sell to customers' yard sale at Schrock Innovations. <laughs> come, come buy our old tech junk. Yay. That's such a – that's so in sync with our brand. I think we should totally do that. I'm sure it'd sell some of it. I'm sure it would. And then we, people would want warranties on it too. All right. <laughs> if you okay. give a mouse a muffin. All right. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate the call. Thanks, Thor. All right. Have a great afternoon. 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. Bob, you're next up on the program. How can I help you today on Compute This? Yeah, 
I, I just wanted to, I'm a long-time listener and a customer. Thank and, you. And I wanted to give a shout-out to Tyler in the Omaha Service Center who helped me through a really weird problem I had yesterday. Gotcha. Are you sure that wasn't Kyle? Oh, maybe it's Kyle. There you go, because he, yeah, the, the, my, my producer was like, yeah, he wants to give Tyler a shout-out, and I was like, I'll roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Kyle. That's good because he he was in there last night. But what did he do for you, Bob? Okay, I had something really weird. Now my I had uh, been traveling, so my I had my laptop restarted like over Memorial Day. But it looks like yesterday, I mean Friday night into Saturday, my com my laptop was restarted again for some reason. And I have Endpoint. I had you guys ins install Endpoint. I have Secure Updater. I'm probably overdue for a maintenance checkup because I haven't done that since late October. Yeah, oh gosh, yeah. But uh, it came out when I got to, when I was trying to get to certain sites, it told me I wasn't safe. What sites? Uh, well, some of them are ones where I had to uh, provide a user ID and password, like I have AOL Mail. Well, another site was like MLB.com where you don't have to sign in at all. Okay, gotcha. So uh, what did Kyle do to solve that for you? Um, you know, he 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 uh, put me on the shock desk, and I didn't understand a lot of what he was doing. He tried he tried a few things before that, but then let's see. I think he reinstalled Google Chrome because that was my that's the internet browser that I use. Um, and then he I think he used something called CCleaner. Yep, he he basically went through and cleaned everything up, made sure that all your temporary files. He reset your browsers. Um, he made sure there was nothing. It's, it, this is what this is what I'm guessing he would have done because that when you see cleaners like the tail end of all that. So if he did a bunch of stuff he didn't know what he was doing, and then he ran C Cleaner to clean it up, he was resetting everything to make sure that you weren't getting redirected anywhere, that there wasn't any. Because a lot of times you you get pop ups on your screen or your computer will just automatically go to weird websites, and you're like, why is this happening? I'm not infected. My, my endpoint says I'm not infected. When actually what happened is there was like an add-on in your browser uh -huh. that uh, that somebody compromised the add-on for the company. They didn't compromise your computer. They compromised something that your browser was running on your computer. Um, and then that makes your computer do funny stuff. And so by resetting everything, it kind of gets a clean slate. And if the problem magically stops, then you add everything back in one at a time until you figure out what's compromised. And then uh -huh. you don't add that one back in. So that's, that's probably what he was doing for you. Okay. And, and the other thing was that I forgot to tell him was this. I have my granddaughter a couple days a week, and I let her play on the computer the other day, and I'm not sure where she goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. The wandering daughter on the computer. All right, so there, uh, there's something that I've been meaning to do that I haven't done, and uh, my wife is actually on me to do it because we got a new router. And, uh, and when we got a new router, you know, we used to have a service called OpenDNS set up on our router. And OpenDNS is a filtering system basically a dns server is, is the do domain name server it's what that's what allows you to type schrockinnovations.com and end up at schrock innovations instead of having to type like 72.68. whatever dot whatever it allows you to type in an english word or a name and then go to a website um well that dns service that translates you know right now you're probably using cox or CenturyLink for that um, but you can switch that in your router to tell it to use OpenDNS, and then OpenDNS maintains a list of all the websites that you'd probably prefer your daughter not end up on. And what it can do is when any request is sent to that website, whether it's for a picture of an ad for BuzzFeed with a half-naked chick on it that says, wow, you can make this this much bigger in four days with this one simple trick. And when you see those, those stupid ads, they just don't show up anymore because it can't you, – your computer, your whole home network, whether you're using a phone, a tablet, a laptop, it can't get to those sites anymore. And it can't be disabled locally. It has to be disabled by the administrator on the router, which, of course, is protected by a password, which, if you're a parent, your kid doesn't know. Uh, and so that way you can literally lock down the house. Now, there are some, some problems with this. For example, if your wife, li wife likes to shop at Victoria's Secret or Soma, those are actually uh, considered pornographic websites by OpenDNS, and she won't be able to shop there anymore. That could be a plus. Now, if we could only get eBay included in that. Um, so... The <laughs> <laughs> so basically, there are some downsides. Whereas from from a user's perspective, you're like, gosh, I wish, I wish, you know, it wouldn't block me when I'm trying to do like legitimate stuff. Or like if you're going to a website, uh, you can tell it whether or not you want it to block weapons, for example. Um, so if you block, you know, weapons, you can't go to Arms List, which is like Craigslist for guns. Um, you can't you can't go there because that's a prohibited site. Even though if you're an adult and you like to look at guns that are cheap that people are selling, that you could just go out and buy, you know, at the Walmart parking lot. 
<laughs> Not that I've ever done that. <laughs> um, you know, you, can, you can't get there if you open DNS. You have to disable it for the whole network. You can't just disable it locally. Of course, there are add-ons because Cisco bought OpenDNS because it was so effective. Now there's all kinds of add-ons you can buy for it that allow you to override it temporarily and things, but you have to pay subscriptions for that level of service, whereas the freebie service is free. And if you have little kids at home, especially like I have a 10-year-old at home, he's getting to that, uh, that beautiful age. Um, and so it's, uh, it's getting to be, my wife's like, you need to get this done. So I'm like, if I'm going to do it again, I'm going to make a video of me doing it. So that way, anybody else, like if they're, if they're trying to do it for themselves, there'll be like a, a, a how to video for it. Cause I don't know why, but I feel like all these services and things when they have their, their products, it's confusing as heck. I feel like if I put up a video on how to mine ether, the cryptocurrency, People would like the video better than reading the technical document because I'll be like, do this and do that. And, hey, rookie mistake, pro tip, I did this and it didn't work. Don't use these junky riser things because they don't work well. And, you know, that just saves somebody like 50 bucks on, on Amazon or something. You know, so I don't know. So maybe I'll make a video of that whenever I get around to doing it. You know, of course, she's listening now, so I'll be doing it tonight. Uh, <laughs> you need to do that for your customer store, remember. Okay, I'll get it done. But, uh, but, yeah, well, thank you, Bob. I, I always appreciate hearing from customers, and Kyle appreciates it, too. I'll let him know you gave him a shout-out. Uh, one thing that was incredibly helpful to us, uh, when you have a moment, and I, I, need to do, I need to be better about doing this myself because uh, Matt over at Excel Roofing, my dad had hail damage a year ago in a storm, and he took care of my dad, got him a whole new roof. I mean, Excel Roofing went above and beyond. And I thought just the other day, I'm like, here I am on the radio every Sunday saying that like, people like Bob, if you have compliments like that, if you could please post a Google review because that influences where our website ranks, like how many positive reviews we have. And whenever there's a problem, everybody will post a negative review. But it's not a natural thing like when you have a great service experience to go post a positive review. And these kind of calls make Kyle feel good. It makes me feel good. I know we're doing our job. But Google doesn't know, which means Google doesn't rank our website higher, which means other people don't come into the shop and we don't have as much business. So if there's any chance that you have a moment, Bob, if you could pop over to our, our – if you Google Schrock Innovations Omaha, it will bring up the little map on the right side. You can click write a review and just pop a review on Google. I would really appreciate it because it seems like as soon as we get two or three or four or five-star reviews up there – all of a sudden, we get three one-star reviews, like bam, 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 and they're all from people who've never been in the store before, and they're all from people from overseas. We must have helped them on the Schrock desk, I guess. Hmm, they couldn't be fake. 402, fake fake news, fake reviews. 402, 558, 1110, 800, 543, 1110. One more quick break. We'll wrap up the show. Coming up next on Compute This. Modular computers from Schrock Innovations cost less to own, last longer, are easier to repair and upgrade, and... All right, so we had some uh, some conversations going on. Uh, Thomas on Facebook was writing, hey, it seems like every week that you say there's no, nothing bad is happening in the news. My chair is shrinking again. Uh, look how much taller I am now, seriously? Like, you don't notice it happening during the show, but then eventually I'm, like, down here. You can see, like, like let's benchmark my head right now. Look in the background. And then when we come back from break, we'll do the next five minutes, and we'll see where my chair is at. But I bet I'll, bet I'll be lower again. <laughs> But uh, Tom was writing on there that uh, it seems like every week that you say, hey, there was nothing bad going on in the news this week. Everything is great. Woohoo! Next week, there's like some Armageddon story. Like, so, so maybe just please stop saying that stuff. So, yeah, it's Murphy's Law. It happened. Hi, Emily. Appreciate you listening. All right. Jody has asked us some questions. So it's kind of cool. You can go ahead and pop up on Facebook.com slash Rock Innovations. Post questions on here as we're doing the show. If I if I can. I, wow, I'm tall now. Look at that. See, oh, my goodness. Um, they just, I just got through the time delay. I saw how tall I am. I'm at the top of the frame on the screen almost. Um, so anyway, the, uh, but if you post questions here, I do try to respond to them as we go through the program. All right, Roger posts, with Windows 10 update in the past, I can no longer shut down the laptop computer. I have to continue pressing and holding the button. I had just bought a new battery and it drained completely. All right, so the new Windows 10 update did move some things. The creator's update moved some things around in control panels and stuff. You should still be able to shut down though. Um, when you reboot the computer again, if it didn't finish installing the update, check and make sure it did. But if your download button is missing, if you're a Shrock Desk subscriber, you, we can't do that over the Shrock Desk. Or yeah, we can actually. We can see the shutdown over Shrock Desk. So if you're a Shrock Desk subscriber, let us know and we'll remote in and take a look at that for you. All right, let's go wrap this show up, guys, and we'll be back for After Shrock.
All righty, folks, welcome in to the final few minutes of Compute This. My name is Thor Schrock. I'm the owner of the Schrock Innovations Computer Company, our endpoint antivirus software, the best you can get for your computer, highest security you can possibly have, is on special right now at Schrock Innovations, $60 off. So it's it's $99 instead of $160. You can buy it on the website at schrockinnovations.com. And I saw some of you who did the after Schrock last week and asked for that. We're actually buying. We sold four copies yesterday alone before the radio show even aired uh, because we made sure we want to test everything. So we got it all up yesterday. Um, so people are buying it off the website. It's on specials. You can click go to schrockinnovations.com, uh, click shop, click on specials. It's all right there for you. Uh, otherwise, you can just search for Endpoint, and it will pop right up. You can also get it, of course, at the service center, and you can also get it over the Schrock desk. If you give us a call at Schrock, we can get an appointment set up for you. If we're too busy to do it right away, we'll get an appointment set with a time later in the afternoon for you. All right, so 402-558-1110, 800-543-1110. John reacted to the notice. Did he do it right? John, let's find out if he did it right. What did you do? Um, basically, just... Uh, I checked my settings. Nothing was really needed to be changed, so I said accept or leave as is. And then I get another message saying, do you want this to be saved or, or reject? And I just said save. Okay. And then it said, I got a message, thank you. you we will notify you before the next uh, update of, of Windows. Oh, okay. So you, you signed up to be an early adopter. There's nothing wrong with that. Basically, you'll be one of the first people that gets the next update. So if it goes badly, make sure you call the show and let me know. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thanks for the call, John. I appreciate it. All right. That got John in the drawing for the $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. We're going to draw for that here right now. Today's winner, $25 is... Bob. Congratulations, Bob. You got yourself a $25 Schrock Innovations gift certificate. Kathy will get a hold of you on Monday to get that mailed out to you. I'm going to send an email over uh, today to the uh, Lincoln Service Center to let them know. So if you, you want to use it today in the shop, just let them know to check with Lincoln, and they will get that to you. All right, so we're going to do After Schrock here in a minute here as soon as we wrap up the program. Also, KMTV Channel 3 tomorrow. We're up a little early, 926, a little earlier than normal. But it'll be my first segment with the new co-host, Kelly. Because Kayla, you know, she went off to the big leagues. So now, now, or no, Kayla's still there. Mary went off to the big leagues. And so now Kelly is there. And what, what should I do with Kelly? Like, should I, I got to do something silly. And I always mess with, I always mess with them. So I've got to do something to mess with them. I'll have to think about that. If you have any suggestions, pop them on Facebook. And then if I pick your suggestion, you can watch the show tomorrow at uh, 926 and see me do it. All right, we'll see you guys again next Sunday for another edition of Compute This. If you have any questions for me on Facebook, now is the time to post them, facebook.com slash Schrock Innovation. Well, I don't have to give the URL. If you're still listening, you're already there. <laughs> Habit. So anyway, yeah, you can go ahead and post the comments there. So yeah, we had some some questions about what's going on with the, uh, the Papillion Service Center. Oh, I wanted to tell you how I really feel. <laughs> so you probably saw it on my face. I was like, <sighs> oh, okay. So. First of all, we have the same landlord for our Omaha location that we have for our Papillion location. Um, and so everything I'm saying is tempered through that filter because I don't want to say I don't want to break a relationship because, you know, they're my landlord in another location. But the Papillion Service Center is a 3,000 square foot service center of which um, we, I don't know, the, when we designed Papillion, we were building a lot more desktops than we are now. We're building a lot more laptops now. And so we don't need as many square feet is what it amounts to. And so basically we're paying an astronomical amount for that space. And it was going to go up. They wanted a, uh, an increase on the rent. Um, I think our triple nets, if you're in real estate, commercial real estate, or you've ever released a building, the triple nets for that place are like $7 and 25 cents a square foot. They are ludicrous. Um, brand new construction on 84th and 370 in uh, Olson Drive over there at Midlands Place. It's like $4 and 80 cents a square foot. So that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you talk about $3 a square foot over 30,000 square feet every single year, yeah, that, that's, that's hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month that you're spending that you shouldn't be spending. That we could be spending on other stuff like longer radio shows or more promotions or, you know, the cool stuff. Um, so anyway, we've got to, we, we have to get that, that wrapped up over there. Um, and so we need another place to move. So we looked at the, we looked at Bellevue. Uh, there's a bay right next door to Nobby's off of 370. 
Um, but I mean, it was run down. Like even the parking lot was run down. Like it was all cracked and nasty. And we were a little concerned because it's like, you know, we we're not the cheapest place to go to get your computer fixed. We try to have the best service. That's that's what we do. And so you can't be a low cost leader and a high service provider or you'll go broke because you can't afford really good people unless you charge an appropriate price. I'm not saying like, you know, we're double or anything, you know, we're 10 percent higher, maybe. But can we really charge a premium and then put ourselves into a budget rundown bay? Some people would say, well, if you're good, you're good. So it doesn't really matter where you're at. Right. But then again, there is this thing about first impressions and that matters. So the other thing is this bay in, in Bellevue by Nobby's was kind of on a hill. And so the parking lot sloped away. And I was afraid that, especially with our elderly customers, that there was a handicap spot right in front of the door, which was great. But you're getting out of your car. You're trying to get a, a computer tower out of the backseat. And we try to look out the window and see you coming and, and rush out to help you. But sometimes we don't see everybody. I mean, I can just see some per some poor person falling down and sliding down the hill in the winter. And then, you know, car comes by and runs over their leg. It would just be terrible. And I would feel bad. So I don't know that, you know, I had like an Ally McBeal moment there of customers getting run over by buses. And it probably wasn't a good, a good idea. So then we looked over at uh, this place. Uh, if you know where Take Aim is, there's a shooting range down there in Bellevue off 36 and 370. There's a big hill. And then there's a bunch of buildings hidden behind the hill across the street from Target. Um, so at the end of that building, there's a bay there that was designed to be a drive through, but we might be willing to, to shave it down for us and put us in. Um, and then there is a, right across the street from that, there's a peak performance and they're looking to move to a smaller bay. And so uh, that that corner bay was available there. We wanted the corner because you can't see anything anywhere else in that plaza from the street. So we looked at that and uh, the, the place that it was the peak performance building, they were like, listen, uh, you know, yeah, it's going to cost you like $40,000 to build out your, your bay and make it the way you want it. I'll uh, tell you what, you build out your bay and we'll give you like the equivalent in free rent. And I'm like, free rent? That's like, under the rate they were charging, that's like two years of free rent on a five-year lease. I mean, that seems a little unusual to me. I mean, I'm not complaining, but it seems a little unusual, like a little desperate. Like, are you guys behind on the mortgage payment desperate? Plus, one of my competitors is in that strip mall. And I mean, I, we've, he's led, he's, I, I, I know some things about his operation and I know that if we moved into that strip mall or even if we moved across the street from him, it, I mean, it, even if it resulted in like a 10% decrease in business for him, that would be a big problem for him. Um, and from everything, everybody, I, I have employees working for me now that used to work for him. Uh, Tony's a good guy. Like, you know, I'm not here to crush anybody's dream. There's plenty of business to go around. Let's all compete and have at it. But, you know, boy, that bay is the right price. It's the right, you know, scenario. It's a little rundown, but I think we can pretty it up with the amount of rent I'll be saving. It could be the Trump freaking palace by the time I'm done with it. We can have gold over the doors and everything after year five. But I'm saving that much rent moving in there. No joke. It's like four grand a month we're saving by moving there. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. So you start looking at those numbers and you're like, gosh, you know, maybe that's the place I need to be. On the flip side, you know. The landlord's willing to kick out a guy that's already there that's been paying rent that's kind of struggling to get along right now. But boy, hope you don't ever fall on bad times. You know, I kind of hope your landlord would have your back or something there, not like, you know, bring in your biggest competitor three doors down and, uh, and stick an option in the lease not to renew your lease. You know, that'd be pretty rough. So anyway, um, so we are going to be moving the Papillion Service Center. That is that is a, a known fact. We're trying to get it moved so there's no disruption. So we don't want to have to close in December and then reopen in like March because of construction. So we're trying to get construction started now that it'll be ready in October so that we can maybe bundle um, like the world's biggest garage sale and the ultimate upgrade launch or the, the ultimate upgrade, the, the holiday special launch. This year's holiday special guys is going to be off the hook nuts. We've, we're, we're working on with the technology now because it's brand new, getting all the kinks worked out of it. Oh my gosh. If you thought like an Intel i7 or their new Intel i9 is fast, the Ryzen chips smoke it. I mean, this is this is like a technician's nirvana. I mean, this these computers are this is the first real like new technology we've had in like four years. Everything else has been incremental increases. So wow, we're gonna have a good holiday special this year. <clears throat> if we couple a grand opening with that, we could have bounce houses and face painters and you know footballs going back and forth and grills. We get maybe the soy sauce house of sausage out there. Bought our first computer ever, so that'd be kind of poetic, you know. So we get them out there, maybe you know get their meats out there. I mean, it would be a really fun time. So that's what we're trying to do. We'll see how well it works out. But we don't know exactly where we're going to end up yet. 
All right. So going into questions, if I purchase Endpoint, how do I delete my Norton? It renews in February. Great question. First of all, you have to uninstall your Norton from your computer, Ronald. Second question is, or second point is you have to contact Norton and cancel your auto renew. Now, they're going to want you to do this through your My Norton account at MyNortonAccount.com, I think. Let me double check and make sure that's right. My NortonAccount.com. MyNortonAccount.com. Yep, it's MyNortonAccount.com. <coughs> oh, the cough button doesn't work on this microphone. Sorry. But uh, you can log in there <coughs> with your username and password. If you don't know your password, you can reset it. Excuse me. <clears throat> and then once you've reset the password, you'll be able to log in and click cancel auto renew and they won't charge your card. But if, if, you think, if you're counting on your card expiring, don't do that. They will keep trying expiration dates until they get one that works. They are relentless. Um, Windows 10 network settings. Ron's asking, can you explain if the VPN setting is a real VPN feature? Boy, I don't know. I, I can't imagine it is, Ron. <clears throat> VPNs are subscription services that cost money. So let's look back here. VPN setting. And I'm wondering if it's something you can turn on and off with, with uh, connect to a VPN in Windows 10. Okay, so that feature allows you to turn on and off a set of pre-programmed VPN connections because you don't always want to use your VPN because you pay based on how much you use it. Um, so, for example, let's say you are on uh, websites. Cox knows exactly what websites you're on all the time, everything. In fact, they're required to keep that information for 90 days. If you use a VPN service, especially one overseas, this is where you want to look for a Russia or you want to look for an Australia or a New Zealand or even a Canada, um, you can use the VPN. I mean, it's not going to make you impervious. If the government wants to see what you're doing, they're going to see what you're doing. Um, there's agreements in place to make sure that happens. But if you want to keep your prying eyes safe from like just your Internet service provider and stuff like that, that VPN is a way to do it. You will pay monthly for the VPN service. So that's uh, that's rough there. All right, Mary, Secure Updater is now working on my computer. Thanks for letting your team know to help me, and they called last week. No problem, Mary. We're actually working on a new client version of uh, Secure Updater. Um, we've had some weird stuff lately. Like, for example, we had somebody telling us, you know, why is it that uh, CCleaner? Uh, there's an update available for CCleaner, but Secure Updater is not updating it. Why? Well, Secure Updater is designed to look for what version number is installed on your computer, and then they look. it looks for what version number is available. And it compares the two. And if the available version is, is higher than the version that's on your computer, it says, okay, I need to install that. And it does. If they're the same, it doesn't. And originally, it never occurred to us that, my goodness, <clears throat> some company might make version 3.5.0, and every other version they've ever made was 3.5.49, 3. Or 3.49, 3.48, 3.47. And for some reason, this time around, they made 3.5. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. and secure updater truncates it two digits so there's a new version 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001 and secure updater won't download it because it doesn't know it's different um so what we've done is we we went ahead and uploaded the, the current file for the newer 3.5 0, 0, 0, 0, um and so the, the options all the choices we had were bad ones um we could pull uh, seat cleaner from secure updater until they come up with a new full version which would solve that problem uh, two we could just make up a version number we can make up version 17 and then secure updater will say oh i have to install that and it would install it for everybody and we could just leave it at version 17 for a couple days but that would cause everyone's secure updater to be read for like two days but then we could change it back and by that time you are everybody has it and then it would be green again <sighs> not a great solution or we can just not update it which is what a lot of people's computers are doing now. Again, not a great version. Now, the thing is with CCleaner, it's not a huge security problem. CCleaner is not something that gets compromised and leveraged by hackers. So we're not too concerned about it. We're going to wait for their new version to come out. But in the meantime, we're redeveloping a new client that you run on your computer for Secure Updater that's going to take this kind of stuff into account in the future. And that's going to hopefully be out before the end of the year. So we're, we're looking forward to that one. So thank you, Mary, for the, the compliments. Adam appreciates it. All right. Is the Semantic Mac compatible? Yes, it is, actually. The new version of Endpoint is compatible with um, Mac, starting with, um, oh my gosh, what was it? I think it's Sierra and higher um, that it'll work with. So yes, it is Mac compatible on newer Macs. You have to be running the current Mac OS. If you're running an old Mac OS, it may not be compatible like Yosemite, something like that. It's not going to be compatible. All right, Heather asks, does Shrug take old CPUs to recycle? We have several we need to get rid of. Heather, we do, and we do not charge for it. Um, we used to do a, uh, a cleanup event once a year 
in April. Um, and then during the cleanup event, we told everyone, you know, we take computers all year round. We just do a cleanup event because people don't know that. So then they all come in for the cleanup event. So the first year we did it, we had a mountain of computers. You can see those pictures are on Facebook. You can see it. They're just mountains of computers. The second year was a little less, and the third year was a little less. And the fourth year, we rented a pod, and we didn't really fill it up. And then we're kind of like, the fifth year, we didn't do it. And so we were debating this year whether we should do our cleanup event or not. In fact, I think instead what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to cut like a PSA spot. Look, I'm shrinking again. Um, I just shrunk another inch. I just felt it happen. It was like, boom. but um, we're going to do like a PSA spot where we can uh, we can say, hey, you know, we're going to take your computer and bring them on in. But yeah, like we never charge for computers. We never charge for accessories like keyboards, mice, printers, things like that. The only things we charge for are monitors. It's fifteen dollars per monitor to recycle them because we have a hard cost on getting rid of those. Everything else, the recycling guys willing to take for free, so we just pass that right on to you. Um, hard drives in your computers are all removed and they are wiped before they are recycled. And when these computers are recycled, they are actually recycled. They don't end up in a landfill in Africa somewhere. They go to Des Moines, where they are ground up, processed down to core components and used to manufacture new electronics. So it's a, it's a, it's a true recycling. All right, so any, uh, this is the, uh, there's a little bit of a delay here. So this is like the two minute warning. Any other questions to cover before we end the aftershock? My phone was vibrating, so I don't know if that was one of you guys doing that or if that was my wife telling me to do something. So let me pull this out and check. Hi, hon. <clears throat> All right. It was my wife. Let's see what we got here. Oh, no, a lesson from Mother Nature. Persistence is survival. I don't know if you can see this on the screen, but that's my grill. And that's a bird's nest in my grill. They keep coming back. Now, we didn't barbecue. I, no, that would be mean. So we clean the nest out every single time and they keep coming back. They're nesting in all the grills in the neighborhood in my area right now. So it's really fun. You open the grill up and there's like a leaves in it. Like, you know, like you're using it to recycle your, like it's a compost bin or something. They fly in the back. I don't understand it. You think that thing gets hot after a while. You know, you, it stinks like rotten meat in there. You might not want to go in there, birdie bird, but they don't learn. They don't learn. All right. So no other questions coming up. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and end and wrap this one up. Um, the service centers, um, Lincoln is, uh, is the turnaround times are excellent. If you have a prepaid maintenance certificate, now is the time to bring it in. This is the summer doldrum. This is when things slow down in computer repair. People are out doing other things. So this is a great time. Oh, you can't really see that. Uh, this is a great time to uh, to bring the computers in and use those prepaid certificates before they expire. If you haven't had a maintenance checkup in the last six months, this is when you want to come in and get one. If you wait for the sale, we're always super duper busy. But right now we're not super duper busy. So you can come in now and get the computer turned around pretty quickly. Um, Papillion in Omaha, same deal there. They're they're well below norms right now. They're they're not dead, but they're not they're certainly not running at full capacity either. So this is a great time to come in if you're having an issue or a nagging problem. Let us take care of that for you. Also, uh, I really appreciate your referrals. Your word of mouth means a lot to me. Um, it is literally the best advertising that we can get, and it's uh, hands down, hands down, the most appreciated. Um, also your reviews. If you have a moment to uh, go ahead and share this video with your Facebook friends so they can find it too. Also, uh, if you could take a moment to review us on, on Google. Um, Facebook reviews are great. They don't really help us on Google though. And Google is what drives the customers in our door, unfortunately. I hate kind of playing to the man, but that's it's what you got to do. They, they pretty much run internet search. So, um, you know, it, every, I think it's every three or four additional five-star reviews we get on Google, uh, we move up an entire spot in the search engine results. And the difference, if you're number one, the difference between being number one and number two, number one gets about 80% of the traffic and number two gets about 10% of the traffic. So being number one is super important. So if you have a moment and you like to show your